Hello, everybody. This is David Montesano, founder of College Match. Today's session is, if you're not a STEM student, you can still get into Stanford and Cornell with this hook. And we're about to show you what this hook is in a second. Today, I happen to be very fortunate because I'm going to be meeting today and interviewing a colleague of mine, Eileen blum Burgat, who's an admission consultant specializing in performing and visual arts. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about Eileen's background. She had a lot of successes and some failures, she's even admitted, as a professional violinist. And then she got into equities analysis, working on Wall Street. So she's done a lot of different amazing things with her life. Um, today, she is on the board of San Francisco Conservatory of Music, and her background includes Stanford Music in French as her bachelor degree and a master in music from Manhattan School of Music. I'd like you to give a warm welcome to Eileen. Hi, Eileen. Hi, David. Thanks for inviting me. It's our pleasure. I'd like to just get started. Again, the title of this session is, if you're not a STEM student, you can still get into Stanford and an Ivy with this hook. We're about to tell you what this hook is. Let me give you a sense of this. So I'll go ahead and ask Eileen, how do I leverage my musical or artistic talents if I'm a student, like say a college, high school, or, or maybe a junior to help me gain admission to Stanford or to an Ivy like Cornell, Penn, or Princeton? Yeah, well, I can just talk to you about my personal experience and actually my own, my daughter's experience because both, because both of us were lucky enough to get into Stanford. Um, way back in the day, it was, 11% acceptance rate, so it was a lot easier to get in. Today it's a 4% or less acceptance rate. Um, both of us are violinists, and um, both of us use the violin, and we were both also very good academically, but um, we leveraged our, our ability in music and, um, and our performance ability to, um, to, to basically fill an un unmet need at Stanford. Um, a lot of these Ivies, um, including places like Princeton, um, Dartmouth, Yale a little less because there's a lot of music students that apply there, but um, most of the Ivies actually are lacking in humanities students, the students that are really seriously in interested in the performing arts or any humanities for, for, for that matter, because most people are going to STEM these days. So, um, so what I did personally is um, I was a good student. I actually positioned myself in a way, I won several competitions, um, not anything major, but significant enough. My daughter did something similar and we also, sent in an, a very strong art supplement and, um, and used our musical abilities in such a way to, as to really kind of make our applications pop. And, um, and we filled an, un, I mean, she really filled an unmet meet at Stanford where the music department is, is, is actually okay, but it's not one of the strongest departments. And so she's, she and another, a lot of the other students have really helped that department. Um, and, and so, and therefore, and I think as she had, if she hadn't been a music student, she probably wouldn't have gotten in if she hadn't leveraged that ability. Thank you for sharing that personal experience. I think that's one of the most powerful things for our listeners to hear is, you know, people who actually made it in. And it's, it's amazing that it's two generations, right? Getting into Stanford with that same hook of the humanities and specifically violin. So one quick question I know our listeners are going to be interested in is, how do you select your colleges if you want to have both great academics and a strong music program? Is there a go-to list of schools out there? Well, there's a, yes, there's a go-to list. There's a very long go-to list, actually. So it really depends on where you place on the spectrum of your, where your grades are and where your test scores are and all those things. But um, there are, at the high, at the top end, there's Northwestern, there's Rice, which is very good for classical, um, there's USC, there is uh, Oberlin, which is a little easier to get into, but it's, a, it's an excellent program because you can actually major, you can get a real certificate, you can get a real conservatory degree and also major in something else. So you can do it, it's a five degree program, but you get a, a bachelor's in music and as a performing artist, but you also can major in neuroscience. So if you want to go pre-med, you can do that. So there's a lot more options at a place like uh, Oberlin. Um, Northwestern has something similar. Um, and um, and then there's other schools like St. Olux, which is what less it's, I think it's in it's in the Midwest, and it's a very good school musically. So there are other schools where they have a very strong music program. It's very good liberal arts, and they're easier to get into. So um, yes, the list is very long. Carnegie Mellon, University of Miami, Miami are on the top of my head, but um, 
yes, there's a there's a, a long a long list of, of places where where kids can apply and get very good both ac you know a, a degree uh, academic um, academic uh, experience and performing arts experience. What if a student is, you know, really not sure about, should I get a bachelor in music or a bachelor of fine arts in music? Can you first explain the difference? Because I think our audience needs to know that difference. And then which is better and what, what type of situation? Yeah. So, well, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. If you are passionate about becoming a performer, you know, either a classical musician or a jazz musician or a artist of some type um, or a theater person. There's actually musical theater is another thing I didn't mention, but I've worked with students in musical theater. Those programs are very selective, but um, you have to apply to a wide range of schools. There's a lot of schools that, that offer um, musical theater um, majors. So um, if you are sure that's what you want to do, then I would say you have to do an, a BFA because a lot of these schools um, will actually um, not let you in. If you're, if you're a very good performer, but you're not quite sure, um, you can't, you don't have access to a lot of the um, classes and teachers that people that are in the bachelors of, of fine arts or the BFA have access to. They also call it a bachelor of music. So, um, so it's a very specialized, it's kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket, but if you're sure that's what you want to do, I highly, that's, I recommend applying to the BFA program. If you're not sure, if you're really good at a music, you're a very good pianist, you think you might want to pursue a degree in music, but you really don't know, you may, you know, then I, I recommend a bachelor's, uh, bachelor's of arts in music. Um, and there are other schools actually where you can get a minor in music. So back in my day at Stanford only hired, they only uh, hired, they only, um, had offered a major in music. Now they offer a minor in music. They offer a, even a performance degree, a uh, performance certificate, they call it. It's not a degree. So there are, um, that's Stanford. There are some other schools that are also going that direction where you can go, um, like Boston University has a degree in uh, a, a performance degree. Um, they also have a bachelor's in music, uh, bachelor's of, sorry, BA in music. So there's, those are examples of schools where there are are, they're doing several different types of degrees. Um, but uh, if you want to, if you're not quite sure, I recommend a bachelor's in music, a bachelor's of BA in music where you're not applying to the BFA. And um, in those cases, you send different types of art supplements. So we can talk about that in another, if you have another question about the art supplement, but there are different um, requirements for those two different degrees. Great, I, I do have a question. Thanks for bringing up the art supplement. What should someone include in the art supplement if they play a musical instrument? So if you're applying for a BFA, there's very specific requirements. Um, I know for string instruments, they always require a scales. They, they require usually an A2. They require three different, um, if they don't require an A2, they require three different um, contrasting pieces, usually from different periods of time, like a Baroque piece and something from the classical period and something more modern um, or something romantic. But it's usually at least three contrasting pieces and, and also something technical like a scale or arpeggios. Um, if you're applying just for the for like an art supplement to make your application look good, which a lot of people do, um, that's a lot more flexible. Um, but usually I recommend, and it depends on the school you're applying to. So it's sort of like tweaking the out, you tweak the supplement depending on which, you know, it's, it's a little bit customized. But in general, um, you do a, you, would perform at least two pieces. It doesn't have to be very long. It's usually less than 10 minutes. Um, and it's just two contrasting pieces. So it's a lot less. There's, there's no real requirement um, when you apply for the art, you, you send your art supplement in as a musician. It's if you're, unless you're applying for the BFA and then that's very, there's very specific requirements depending on the school. So, yeah. Great, and for our viewers, by the way, we're gonna offer a, uh, people that write us or email Eileen later, and I'll tell you more about that special offer at the end of this session, but they're going to get access to something that's going to help them, one of those tools that goes into the portfolio. So wait for that. We're going to give you that at the end of this. Let me ask one more question, or a couple more actually. So what, um, beyond what you should include in the art supplement, let me ask you something. What if somebody listening today is thinking, you know, I, I would really like to try the, the, the pre-professional Bachelor of Fine Arts, but what happens, Eileen, if they decide to go down that path, it's very pre-professional and focused, they're gonna become a, you know, a performing artist at the end of this, right? Hireable by a symphony or hireable by, you know, in some professional capacity. But what if they decide halfway through it's not right for them and they want, it's too focused, too narrow, 
and they want to change their major, can they do that once they've been admitted to a BFA program? Okay, so that is school by school. Um, a school like Rice, for example, is, is very difficult to get in. Um, once you, if you pull out of the BFA, uh, you have a hard time, you couldn't go back in, that's for sure. Basically, you have to, you know, basically you take a lesson, you can take private lessons, but that's, you've given up on that performance program. So you're gonna be honing in on something else, which is not easy to do. And most of the times actually at that school, for example, they accept you on the basis of getting into the into music school. Um, so every school is different. Um, so it's, it's a hard to, to answer that, is it, generally speaking, but um, I can use myself as, as an example. Um, so I majored in music um, and in French, I was a French studies major. And then I went and got about a master's degree in, in violin performance. And then I had a hard time making a living as most musicians, as many musicians do, unless you get a ma major symphony job. So I ended up working in music, but I also worked in finance and then um, applied to get an MBA. So there are, it's a possibility if you have enough professional experience, even if you're a musician, um, where if you've worked in the music business and you've had people, you know, I even had my pianist send, write me a recommendation for business school, but we also had a kind of a business going, a trio. And so anyway, there's ways of doing it so that um, if you have a, it's, I, if you're not sure, once again, I recommend getting a BA because I had, since I had a BA, it was easier to get in applied to graduate schools. If you have a BFA, it's possible, but you have to have a lot of work experience to prove that you have like a business, you know, a business sense and a, a, a pre-business pre type of profile. Um, so does that answer your question or? Yes, thank you, Eileen. I, I, let me have, I have one, a couple follow-up aspects to that because I think our audience will be interested. Could I, could I still apply to graduate schools if I have a BFA? Like for example, professional schools, non-music, like right. business law, the big ones, business law and medicine. Um, you yeah. mentioned business, but could you touch on, and I know you've got a background, um, you're, you're, I've, you've got parents that are, that are physicians and you know, a, a deep, you know this deeply. Um, we've talked a lot about it, but what if I want, if someone wants to become, who's listening, wants to become a doctor after getting a BFA, is that possible? How would they go about doing that? Okay. Well, I've, I've, it's funny you asked that because I've gone down that path for a little while. I mean, I thought about it anyway, because my mother always put pressure on our whole family. Someone had to become a doctor, so none of us did. But um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a little bit more complicated because it really depends on what you took um, as an undergraduate. Um, if you're in a Bachelor of Fine Arts, it's very, very limiting. So once again, I say put, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. I don't, most of those programs do not even allow you to take science classes maybe you can take one or two but it's mostly very very specialized you can take other classes in the humanities but taking any kind of lab science is almost impossible if you're doing the bfa because there's just that's so demanding in terms of performance and it's a lot it's music theory it's 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 history to some extent but it's mostly performance stuff so it's really difficult to do if you have a bachelor's and if you have a bachelor's in the, the arts in music or in anything for that matter you can apply you can apply to med school because if you've taken the requirements, you have to take usually a year of biology, a year of chemistry, your physics. I mean, I've, the requirements change, but um, it's possible to do post bachelor's degree, but you have to go, there are specialized programs where you take like an entire year or a year and a half of just the classes for pre-med, and then you take the MCAT, and then you can go to med school. So it is possible, it just takes, you're gonna have to invest a, a several more years in your education, and, um, and you're gonna finish med school, you know, well into your late 20s probably. Which isn't no. so bad when you think about no. it. Late twenties, that's no. still reasonable, right? You know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know people that have gone to med school in their thirties, so it's it's always possible. <laughs> but yeah, um, and for law, it's the same. Law is a little easier. Law, pre-law, because you don't need any prerequisites really for law school. You just have to take the LSAT. So um, you could be a music major and and, and still apply to law school. So. Thanks, Eileen. What about um, if viewers want to know, can they switch to another career? Say, say they do the BFA, not the BA, they do the BFA, and then they find that they, you know, there's just, you know, they, they're not able to get hired by a symphony, for example. Can they switch to something completely non-arts related? Yeah, so that, well, that happens a lot. A lot of people realize that this, I mean, a little late, that it's very difficult to get a symphony job, at least a major symphony job, and even a, a, a lot not so major symphony job. So a lot of people end up going and they, they end up teaching, um, playing chamber music, uh, freelancing, uh, and then they, they either stay with that because that's their passion and they don't care about, you know, making a lot of money. If they do make a lot of money, they have to have a lot of students, 
or um, they can, you can switch careers. Um, it sometimes requires going back and taking some classes. You can take online classes. Um, it really depends on what that career, what career you're talking about. So it's, 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 that's a little bit, it's a very general question, which I could answer, you know, if, if I need a specific case. It's like case by case. What so. about, say, so, can somebody, and we, you know, we were talking about this before because we, we, we know somebody, for example, you've done this too. Let's talk about your case of moving to Wall Street, working for as an equities analyst. Yeah. Um, how hard was that for you to make that switch or was it relatively, is there just a bunch of BFA musicians, you know, working on Wall Street? <laughs> They actually liked me there. So that's, there we go. I, I, fed, I felt, I uh, filled an unmet need. They're like, can you play for us at lunchtime? No, um, I seriously had people say that. Um, I also worked in France in, at, um, in a different type of capacity, but it was also a, a private equity uh, firm. And they were joking around saying, gosh, we're the only music major we have here. But it does make you a little bit different. So it's in a way, if you have the business skills and you have the that mindset they like people that are have different backgrounds they, they don't like the econ majors and those people that are just pre-mba and it, so it, it, it does you know i want to say in, in a way it might actually help you you know to get a job um maybe not at, on Sol at solomon brothers or something or not sorry solomon brothers but goldman sachs but um but um to answer the question was um yeah so i learned basically um on site um I did most of the stuff I did was not really a lot of it was mostly um, not a lot of analytics and the analytics I did were, was not very complicated it was didn't didn't require really difficult very um, advanced math skills but um, I think a lot of people that are in music have very mathematical brains and so they learn very quickly and they can analyze quickly and so I just kind of was trainable um, and that I've heard across the board that there's a lot of people that hire music majors even in actually in STEM believe it or not because it's um, they have those types of brains where they're, even if they didn't do is have a STEM major, they have that, they, they can quickly pick up on, or they, they're very analytical. So um, yeah, it was not, um, it was an entry level position, but I quickly moved up through, I was an assistant, and I wasn't the major analyst, I was an assistant in another analyst. And um, it was, I think musicians tend to be very diligent and very disciplined about, and you know, is structured in their ways of doing things and so that helps in any field really so yeah. well perfect eileen and i just want to reiterate the special offer that we've got so for a limited time viewers who want to learn more about leveraging performing arts visual arts can you know to get into stanford ivy league level stuff uh schools they can email us right or you specifically eileen at eileen at collegematchus.com before, if you email before 4th of July, 2020, you can get a free sample performing arts or arts resume. I wanna thank you, Eileen. This has been really informational and, and certainly I think it's been helpful for our viewers and listeners. Thanks so much for participating. Yeah, thanks for inviting me.